Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another simple class in polymer clay. I've been doing all these simple classes in the open channel because you know what? I think some of you might not be very experienced in clay. So what I would really like to do is give you tutorials that give you a chance to enjoy some success uh, simply and hopefully that do not require you to get a lot of extra materials to actually do the classes themselves. Because I know it's an investment, you know, you start buying stuff and it's like before you know it, you need a room, you need a, an addition on your house or you need to rent a storage locker. <laughs> Okay, so I know what that's all about. Anyway, so one of my goals is to sort of simplify and uh, hopefully offer you some classes where you don't need to go out and invest in a lot of new materials. Now, what we're going to be working with today to make these cute little squiggly, this is actually what we're going to be making. I really like it. It's just a simple sort of wavy pendant. And the clasp is also clay, so we're going to do that, okay? And the surface treatment is um, is a mica powder. Actually, the one I used is a nail powder. It's called chameleon powder, <laughs> something like that. And I found it in the nail section of uh, Timu. Well, I, I uh, searched for nail powders. Anyway, so it's not a new product by any means. You know, if you Google on the internet, you'll see that people have been experimenting with these beautiful powders for some time. Now, this was the original piece I made so long ago. I think this might be Fimo Soft or it might be Pro Matte. I don't know. It's it's been knocking around my studio for literally decades. This piece is probably older than some of you who might be watching. Anyway, so I, I just hung on to it. Now, I can't tell you how I did this. I don't remember. It's such an odd color, isn't it? It's sort of a, a gold with an interference color kicking back. But it's like, I, I don't honestly know what I did here. But that's not important because we can use any mica powders to do it, okay? This particular color is a little odd. I'm not sure anybody would want to make it anyway. Okay, this is far more attractive, I think. Now, what you see before you, these are the experiments I did before I shot the class. Because as I said, this guy, mighty old, mighty old. So I thought... I better make a few pieces and just because it's been so long um, by making a few pieces I may run into an issue that I completely forgotten even existed so that's what these are just little examples now we're going to start off by doing a very unscientific scientific experiment okay and it's unscientific because it's me <laughs> Uh, but I have four different powders that we're going to just run a little test on and see how they do. Now, some of these have been sealed with two-part resin. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to be doing that. That is, we'll talk a, a wee bit about it. But that's not part of the class. This is what we're going to be doing. It has no coating on it. I just, I really like, I like it. It's simple. It's very simple. But, you know, maybe you'll like it too. So it's time for us to get started. So let's do it. Okay, so let's talk about mica powders. So there are so many. Now, I haven't used uh, mica powders in quite a while. Not for any particular reason. I like them, and I used to use them a lot more, but I just have not, excuse me, used them uh, in a very long time. So I decided to start again. And so I bought this from Timu. 
this little teeny tiny pot. But they call this chameleon powder. And you know what? When I used this powder, I don't know that this really existed. It's really beautiful stuff. So I'm going to use that. Now, this is Perfect Pearls. I usually used Perfect Pearls. So let me tell you something about Perfect Pearls. This is a product where the mica has a binder in it, and that binder helps it adhere to the clay. Okay? So even when it's cured, it sticks to the clay better. It did much better when I used it <laughs> than the existing mica powders that were on the market then. Things change so much over the years. Okay, so this is a powder from Let's Resin. And um, I got a, a gift of a set of these and, and they're really very pretty. So we're gonna try this too. And this is Lucy, Lucy Strunkova Copper. Lucy sent this to me. Okay, let me see, is this an opened one? Yeah, it's an opened one. So. What I've done here, because what I would like to do is a little test uh, as to how well these powders stick to the clay after, after the clay is cured. Now, before the clay is cured, of course, the powders stick beautifully, really beautifully. But it's after, after the curing that you will, in many instances, find yourself, see, just this little tiny bit, um, with more powder on your fingers <laughs> than you want. But see how beautiful that is? I mean, that's really beautiful. And of course, they have colors, colors, colors. You cannot believe how many colors you can, uh, you can choose from. And I found this, of course, at Timu. And uh, it was listed in the nail art section. Yeah, nail art. Okay, so I'm just going to try to get a nice coating on, but I don't want to get too much extra on. It's just not necessary, so let me just kind of rub that in just a bit. Okay. Now, I will clean this later. I will take another brush and we are going to use the Perfect Pearls and Turquoise. Let's do a little Perfect Pearl. Perfect Pearls. That's pretty. Woohoo! Okay. Once again, I'm just trying to get some on, but not an excessive amount. Rub it off with my fingers a bit. Okay. All right, so let's give the Let's Resin a go. I'm going to change my brush again. for a fresh one. Hmm, scratching the surface up a bit there, D. Maybe I'll just use my fingers and try to work it in. The brush is scratching. This is so small, I don't think I get my finger in there. Okay, so that's pretty good. I would say that's about the same amount I had done in the others, and I think I will just simply use my fingers again. But I have to change, I have to clean, I have to change my fingers. Okay. Now let me change my fingers. Okay. 
just a little bit of hand sanitizer and I got rid of got rid of the Let's Resin. Now I'm going to stick my finger in Lucy Lucy Strunkova's Cupper. No, I think that this is a pretty fair test, but perhaps what I should do is go over them one more time. Okay, so let's just do one more time. Let me see if I can get my finger in here. Clean my finger off. I'm gonna have to do the cleany thing. I just love that. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay. It's another little bit, not too much. Like so. And let's do the turquoise. Maybe I'll try to use a different finger. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the binder is in Perfect Pearls, but... If memory serves, it does quite a nice job of holding on to the mica. Okay. All right, let's do this guy. I'm just going to try to shake some in the lid. Then we're going to cure this, and then we're going to take... Uh, tissue clean tissue to each one and see if we can rub some off. <sighs> it's funny, I'm putting some on on the Let's Resin powder, but like pushing it around and it seems like I don't know maybe it's just the angle but it almost seems like as I'm rubbing I'm pulling it off the surface I could be wrong it wouldn't be the first time okay now let me just get this off and let's take Lucy Lucy is very generous with her powder there is a ton of powder in that container. And she did send me um, a turquoise as well. So it, it comes in colors and a white. So I'm not really sure if the intent is to use it more as a mica powder or as a pastel. This I don't know. I do not know. Let me see, what does it say? It just says copper. All right, so these are going to go in the oven, and then uh, when they're cool, we're going to see if we can rub some off or how easily it comes off the surface of a cured piece of clay. Okay, so these are out of the oven, and they're still just a tad warm, but I think we can do it anyway. I was going to wait for them to be cold, but... I'm impatient. Okay, so these are just little nail things, little cotton nail things. So I'm going to use one for each. First one we're going to do is Timu Chameleon Color Stuff. <laughs> stuff. Let's see how much comes off when we rub. Okay, that much came off. 
Now let's do the Ranger Blue. Ranger Blue. And it's like nothing came off. <laughs> nothing came off. Something should have come off, right? I mean, I'd see at least a little uh, pale blue. Maybe just a the tiniest little bit came off. All right, now we're going to try Let's Resin. Well, that didn't do too badly. See? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Okay, now we're going to do Lucy. And quite a bit of the Lucy came off too. This and this. These were kind of the losers in this little totally unscientific test. And I say unscientific because the last time I did it, a lot of the gold or a lot of the Let's Resin had come off. But it's quite possible that I just have less on there because if you look at the coverage, just look at the coverage itself, you can see a lot more of the black through. And that was the case before I put it in the oven as well. Lucy's is far more dense. It's very opaque. This guy, very opaque too. So let's, let me do this again. I want to see something. Da, 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 da. Okay, so after the, the initial rubbing off, very little came off then. Okay, so you can see, I think for the Lucy, for Lucy's, I would definitely cover it with something. I'm not sure what. This guy too. Actually, this guy too. I think that if I had enough to totally cover up and obliterate the black, a lot more of this would have come off. You know how I know? Because I made one and a lot of the gold came off. Okay, a lot of it came off and it exposed the black underneath. Ranger, still the champ. Woo. Yeah, Ranger. That binder really works. Nothing. I don't see any sparkles. I see nothing on here. Okay, so there we go. Highly recommend. Uh, you know what? I can't say anything really bad about any of them. This one I love. I love it so much. Okay, see? That... This is what we're going to use anyway. Yeah, well, you know, after the the initial excess comes off, nothing seems to come off then. And it's really sticking to the clay, so got no complaints there. All right, let's move on. All right, so, you know, I've been sitting here and I've been, uh, I've still been rubbing on these to see and at this point, nothing comes off of this one. And so little came off of this initially. Nothing's coming off of it. But as I've been rubbing, these two more and more comes off. More and more of it comes off. See, look at my thumb. It's copper. So I would have to say that if you're going to use Lucy's uh, Metallics and this Let's Resin, you're going to want to definitely want to seal them because eventually all of this will probably rub off, exposing more and more and more of the black. You see here, I've been able to expose more of the black just by rubbing the surface and it comes off on my finger. This guy too. As I rub, I'm exposing more and more of the black clay underneath. Now, that is not happening here. This has not really changed. I look at it, and I don't 
see any difference in the way it looks from before or now. This one too, I've been rubbing and rubbing, trying to rub it off essentially, and nothing is coming off of my fingers. It's whatever is on there now is pretty well stuck to the clay. So I would say you don't necessarily have to seal this. You don't necessarily have to seal this. But if you're going to be using these metallic powders and you want them to retain the same depth, the same color, the same coverage, you probably, you should actually uh, seal them in. Seal them. And I used, I went ahead and I sealed some of these with the Let's Resin stuff. And, and I just have to tell you, they sent me a great big box of their products. So I put some of them through their paces. I tried their UV resin, this resin. And I explained to them that I have very little experience with resin. So I don't really have much to compare it to, but it seemed to work just fine for my purposes. It sealed up the powder quite nicely. So, and it's UV, so I just grabbed, they actually sent me a light in the kit, but I found it to be a little underpowered. So I went and I used my nail, the one for my nails. So here's another one that I sealed up. Let's resin powder with the, uh, with the UV resin on it. This too was one of them. I made this blue guy and I didn't have to seal this at all. This is the perfect pearls turquoise. Okay, this is silver and resin. And this is actually, well, this is the piece that we've been working off of. But I, I don't know that I if I told you this, but this particular piece does have uh, the UV resin on it. Okay, I just decided to run a little experiment. So it has it on it, although I don't think it needs it. Okay, well, the one we make will not have it on it. So, uh, so we'll see the difference. So we are going to make this piece first. All right, so I don't remember how much clay I used for this. I just don't. It was a cylinder, of course. I don't remember how, what the diameter was. I don't remember how long either. So I'm just going to weigh it and see how much it weighs. My scale is set to grams and it is weighing in at 21 grams. So let us take a look at this guy. This is just a cylinder of scrap clay that I've wrapped in black, which is what you're going to do. Take your scrap clay, then wrap it with a sheet of black. Now I wrapped mine, it, it can be quite thin because we're gonna be applying this powder on. It's gonna cover it up. Even if when you close it, some of the scrap shows in the end, it's not gonna matter. So when you wrap the cylinder, you can wrap Wrap it with a sheet of black that is very thin. Okay. So that's 46. So I'm just going to cut it in half. Call 23 grams good. <laughs> it's approximate. I just want this much clay, not this much. See the difference? Okay. Could happen. It's better just to weigh it and make sure it does not. Okay. 23. That's perfect. We're going to go with 23. Because remember, I've got to make this a little bit longer. It has to curve a little bit more because this is not quite secure enough. See, it just, it's too easy for this to come off. Then you've lost your necklace. Okay, so that's it. The scale is very handy. So are blades. Look, I have so many of them. <laughs> right here. All right, so I'm going to close the ends. I see a little bubble. You see a bubble, you pierce it. You get rid of it. 
All right, so I'm going to close the ends and then I'm going to roll it out so that I have a nice long tapering snake of clay points at both ends. Okay, excellent. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Uh, do, do, be, do, be, do. Da, da, da. Okay, okay, okay. I think I done it. I think I done it. I hope I done it. Yes, I'm going to use this. I love that kind of green going to the sort of pinky, pinky magenta with the shots of gold. And I really do. I do, however, like the turquoise quite a bit. I like that too. You know, when you're making something that is sort of plain like this is this is a rather plain kind of design right all it is it's like a double wave like that with a little clasp so in a situation like that maybe you want to pay more attention to how interesting the surface finish is you know I'm not saying that straight gold or copper or any of those colors wouldn't work just it's just that I think when the design is kind of simple like that, it is probably helpful to get a finish that is a little more interesting. See, I find this very interesting because if you hold it a certain way, you just see the green. If you hold it another way, you see the gold. If you hold it another way, you see this magenta shooting back at you. But, you know, it's like those... That automo they don't use that automotive paint on cars anymore, I don't think. Remember when your car, you could buy a car that was like one color in the daytime and another at night? I rented one of those cars once. I couldn't find it at night. It was just not the same color. I could not. I did not recognize the car I rented. Yeah, that was a fun night. Try to find the car. Okay, so let's just quickly see. And yours is going to be what, however long yours is, so you're going to just run this little quick little test to see if it's working, 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 working. Just sort of temporarily move it like that. Now see, this is a long enough. The curve is curved back enough so that when you put it on, it's not just gonna come out. Not like this. Look at the difference. Okay, so I think that this is fine. I think it's fine. And I can even push this a little, make this a little tighter here. Scoop this coil. It's a little bit big, a little bit bigger over here. Something like that. Why not? All right. Now, knowing that that's okay, I'm going to straighten it out. I'm just going to straighten it out. Okay. And because this is messy, it's messy. I'm going to grab a piece of deli paper to work on. It's right behind me in my drawer. All right. There we go. got a fold in it and 
the fold just gets in the way sometimes, so I'm just going to straighten it out a bit. Now, let's use this. I love this. I just ordered more because, look, this is the tiniest little pot. Teeny, teeny, tiny pot. Clean brush. Sort of clean brush. I think this had another, I think this had one of the Let's resin. No, no, I see it shooting back a little bit. It's like gold here and it's sort of peachy magenta over there. Okay, fine. Fine, 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 fine. Because I don't have tons of this, I'm just going to be a little more careful than I ordinary, ordinarily would be. You know, I'm not going to take... Ooh, whoa! I take it all back. Okay, so I think you get the picture. Now, as you're working, I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing, but as you're working, try not to gouge the surface. It's hard for me because, you know, I have nails. I play the guitar, so this hand seems to be... The nails on this hand, on my right hand, are always a bit longer, but I did cut them. But it's awfully easy to gouge. And when you gouge, it's pretty much impossible to get, to remove the gouges. All right, so let me get this done and I'll be back. Okay. All right, so here it is. I got the powder on it. And now I'm just kind of rolling it through the residual powder on the paper. Okay, now when you do this, pay special attention, really look and see if you can see the black coming through. Okay, because as hard as you try, you probably won't have an equal distribution of powder over the entire surface of this piece. I love this piece. Yeah, I do. I'm glad I ordered more of this stuff. I really like it. I do, I do. What can I say? All right, so let us cur look at my hands. Woo! All right, so let us take this end. This is going to be the hook end. The end where this guy hooks on to. And you know what? I think let's just do a little experiment and see how far. It, see, I can get this on pretty far. I can. So I think I'll try to make the hook exactly like this. And let me just take the tip and start to coil it. Like so. Snake doesn't want to move for me. But it's going to have to. And I'm just coaxing it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, 
And I think I'll make this a tighter coil than I have been making them. You see the difference? This is a rather loose coil here. This is tighter in this one, as is this piece, the center. So I just coiled it up a little bit tighter. I think it looks more interesting and it's a more compact design, right? It becomes slightly smaller, sort of more dense in through here, but physically a bit smaller, which is fine by me. I think that these work best as chokers. So if you're gonna be putting it that far up on your neck, you probably don't want something that's all spread out and loose. It's better to have something that's a little bit uh, more compact. Okay, I'm gonna over, over curl it. And then let it relax. Thing is, I'll put this in the oven. I, I'm gonna let this sit for maybe a half an hour and then put it in. Because right now, this is like a straight piece that, that well, it was a straight piece that I have now coaxed and turned and made to curve. But it still has that, mm, I hate to say it has any desire, but I think it wants to open up. It wants to go back to straight, okay? I have forced it to do this, but it's kind of like a spring in a way. Anyway, it, it seems to want to open up again. And so I think if I let it sit just as it is, without being exposed to the heat, it's less likely to open. It may settle better into the shape, this shape, and then I will put it in the oven and it's not gonna have that wanting to open spring thing happening. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let me just see if I can just do this. Yeah, that'll go on, that's fine. All right, so I will be back after I've waited a half an hour and uh, after I put it in the oven and cured it. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere because I forgot. Hello, I was even handling it. We have to make this. Let me set this aside. Okay, you get aside. Step aside. Ooh, I cannot tell you how much I love that. All right, so I've got this powder on my hands. Not a biggie. It's going, I'm going to be putting this powder on it anyway. So I might as well just let the clay clean my hands for once instead of just making me making me clay handed all right so now I'm just going to roll out real I'm rolling it out just like this okay Come on, come on, you can do it. I would say that's good. Let's just cut that much off. Now I am going to cut like that and then pull it back and stick that cut edge just like that. 
Now, I have faith that this is a good size. Okay, it's going to be fine. At this point, when you do yours, you might actually want to take this loop and see if it will fit on your little curvy piece. Okay. Do it carefully, and you should not have a problem. Now, I'm going to take more, and I'm going to roll this out so that it's probably about half the diameter of this. I don't want it very thin or very large. I want this to be a rather slender piece of black clay. And pick up your blade, make another angled cut. Then this guy just goes straight across like that and then you wrap around best you can, okay? Sometimes it doesn't want to wrap. Particularly if it's cold, sometimes the clay is like, nope, not going anywhere. You can't make me. And if your clay is kind of nice and warm, then you can even do a little bit of stretchy poo like that, see? Just tug on it and thin it as you're working. Oops. Now, there's the original cut. So here, I'm gonna make a cut. It's kind of opposite that original cut that's right here. Now I'm gonna take my fingers and just push it like that. Just like so. Now at this end, I'm going to cut right there under that last coil, like so. And I will be drilling right into the middle here. Okay. And having this snake wrapped around that core is gonna make it possible to do a nice drill and nothing will happen. No chipping, none of that stuff. None of that jazz. Okay, now it's time to grab another piece of paper and carefully open your precious stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. Yeah. No, I didn't do the, um, you know, last time when I had it straight out and then I put the powder on and then I did the curvy thing. Well, in a situation like this, you're going to want to construct the piece first and, uh, and then apply the powder because adding the powder makes it harder for the clay to stick together. So had I put this mica powder on first, it probably would have been a lot more difficult for me to get that snake to stick to it. So you're gonna wanna form your, your little claspy part first, then put this on. And it's, it's no big deal, it's easy enough to do. Especially if you have so many brushes. I buy a lot of cheap brushes. Okay. Good deal. I'm not so concerned about the inner opening. I confess.
Okay, we're almost done. I made the original piece of this so long ago. I think my original piece might have been pro mat. I mean, we're talking old. Maybe it was Fimo soft. I don't know, but it's old. And it's just been hanging around my studio. I'm sure I made it in Chicago. Well, I'm not actually sure I made it in Chicago. I started working for FEMO when I was in Colorado. Okay. Da, 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 da. Did I? I'm so bad with time. You guys know this about me. All right. Da, ta, da. <laughs> Ta-da! All right, so now these pieces are going in the oven. Actually, we have a few more minutes to wait for this guy to settle in. And uh, once my waiting time period is over for this guy, we're, I'm putting it in the oven. Okay, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. So the piece is out of the oven. And I like it better. It's tighter. Like the coil is tighter here. This one is tighter, so it's more secure. Now, this one, when I put it on, it's a, it hangs a little low on me. And the actual cord itself from here to there, measures uh, 14 inches. So I am taking one inch off. This is 13 inches, okay? Now, in terms of where the holes are drilled, obviously one hole is in here, like that. But where do we put the other hole? Well, one way to think about this is to think about both of these pieces as one single focal point. That's the way I think of it. I don't think of this as the focal point and then this as the clasp. For something like this, I think that both pieces together form the focal point for me. So when it hangs one end here and then probably one end around here, okay? And that makes sense to me. If you go too low here, this may flip over. So you've got to keep it kind of above the center line. So it's kind of above, but not terribly high. And I think that's how this is going to go. Right there. Okay. So let me grab a needle. It's kind of at the end of my finger, about right there. About right there. Okay, is that where the spot was? I should have made a deeper hole. <laughs> but I didn't. Yeah, somewhere, maybe around there. Let's try this again. There, a hole I can find again. So it's gonna be like this. Mm -hmm. Ta -ta. Like so. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, let's see, this is three millimeters. I have two millimeter O-rings and I have four millimeters. So maybe I'll just do fours. Slide that on. 
It's not going to pinch like crazy, but it's going to be like this. And then there will be an O-ring that snugs up against the surface. Okay, so let's do a bit of drilling. I start out with very fine drill. Find the pilot hole and start drilling. And I am drilling sort of more or less straight in from the edge. One thing you want to be careful of is you do not want to drill all the way through and poke out into the <laughs> into the inside. <laughs> no, 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 no. Try not to do that. So now I'm using a two millimeter drill. Come on. Okay. Now let us move on to the three millimeter drill. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. So this will go that deep inside. That's good just like that. So let me take my glue. I think I'm at the very end here. Let's see if I can squeeze some out. Whoa, there's some. Let me see if I can get a bunch in. Oop, <laughs> I got a bunch in. I did. I did, I did. So push it in. And if I'm lucky, there's going to be a little bit of glue there around the hole that will hold the O-ring. If I'm not lucky, I have to put the glue there myself. Not a huge problem. Okay, so there's one. There's one. Now, of course, the second hole goes in here. So I'm going to repeat, I'm gonna do the same thing, starting with this, I think this is like one and one half millimeters. So I'm gonna drill this, then I'm gonna drill the two, then I'm gonna drill the three. But you do not have to watch me because you watched me do that, I'll be back. So I've, <clears throat> excuse me, I've drilled the hole in the clasp. Now, the next thing you have to do, don't forget to put your O-ring on if you're using them. The next thing you have to do is glue this end in. What you don't want to do is you don't want to do this kind of thing where you glue it like odd like that, okay? Because especially for a three millimeter cord, if it's not just right, it's going to twist and it's going to pull this up in some weird fashion. Okay, so kind of let it relax like so. Put this part in and that's the way it's going to be glued in like that. So that the piece lays flat and doesn't torque up 
or do strange things, okay? So just make sure of that. All right, so let's pull that out. Now I will put this in, and you know what? I, do, I leave it engaged. I leave it on the piece like this, because you can see the clasp kind of sits up this way, right? Okay, then pull this guy around. Make sure that it's not twisted weird. Weirdly twisted. Push it all the way in. This guy will go down, but I suspect I'm going to have to put a little drop of glue there. Yes, I do. Her. Okay. I growled. Her. Her. Ooh, there's still a little teeny bit of glue in here. There we go. Push it down and hold it for just a second or two. Like that. This is so cute. I love it. I love it. You know, I really do love it. I don't know why I made it and let it sit there for decades. Not just years, decades. And I love it with this, this stuff. This chameleon stuff. Yep, it's chameleon stuff. Now, let's take a look at just the difference between the glazed and the unglazed. Now, this is shinier in a way, but I don't know. It's, it's like the surface resin shiny instead of the actual powder shiny. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm going to leave it just like this because, you know, yeah, a little bit of it's going to rub off, but... I'm not seeing much rubbing off at all. And I just prefer this finish. I mean, I might re I might regret it. At some point I might regret it. At some point um it might come off and maybe at that point I would sand all of it off of everything and and then try to do something else with it. It would not be impossible. It certainly wouldn't be ruined. I mean, it could always be used for something. Okay. All righty. See, look at how that's twisted. All right. There we go. Now. Okay, I'll be back. All right, we're at the end of class. So let's look at a couple of other things. Well, first of all, this is the first one I ever made. I have no idea how I made this color or anything. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I don't know. But it's been hanging around my studio for decades. Okay. I like it. I think it's a good idea. But I don't know how I made this. And it kind of bothers me. Okay. So this is all the stuff I had to make before I got to what I was going to do. Now, this is one of the Let's Resin powders, and then I put the Let's Resin resin on top, okay? And I think that this is fine, you know, just as a little pendant. Simple, simple stuff. Okay, here's a great big one. Now, this is one of the things that happened. Now, this is Let's Resin, and then look, I was able to rub off some of the powder, but then I glazed over it. I call this rustic. Yeah, you know what? Whenever it looks like this, it's rustic. Um, and, and I think it's okay, but not my favorite. First of all, I think it's too big. Okay. Here are a couple of other little pendants. So you can do things like this. I think that these are fine, but I think that they're a little more complicated than they need to be. This is the Perfect Pearls. Remember the Perfect Pearls turquoise? 
yeah, that's what this is without any coating or anything on it. And it's not coming off at all. I am going to have to go fish out all my perfect pearls. I have bags of this stuff in my barn. Okay. And here is the Let's Resin with the resin on top. I think these are cute, you know, if you just need to make something kind of quick and easy. You know, it's not a bad design and it's, I think it's good. I think it's good. This is okay, but the color is kind of weird to me. It's kind of this, I, I don't know exactly what color that, that is, but maybe it's a little too brown for me as opposed to yellow. Then this was the first one I did with the Timu powder. That's the first one. And we already talked about the difference in the finish between this, which has a, a resin on, and this that does not. And, you know, I showed you these, these little guys that are, you know, the little pendant things like this, right? You know what I think? I think this is just as good. <laughs> and all it is... It's just a, you know, oops, just a little round thing, oval thing. And do you, I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was in the 80s, uh, Elsa Peretti did this, uh, for Tiffany did this heart. And it was just a little sort of irregular heart that you just threaded on a chain and you know, it didn't have a hanging loop or a bail or anything like that. You know what? It didn't need one. And I have the same feeling about something like this. I prefer this to this, to this. I much prefer this. And you know what? When you wear it, it just lays down on you. That's all. But I like it a lot more than I like this one. Okay, and then there's this guy that I like very much and I will actually wear. So that's today's class. It was pretty simple. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you just make these kind of simple little things. You know, when you start in polymer clay, it can be quite confusing just because the medium itself is so versatile and it crosses over so well into so many different things that you can get very confused <laughs> because it does happen to work with so many other materials, paints and powders and all kinds of stuff. So don't be confused or you know what? You will be a little confused if you're just starting, but everything clears up pretty fast. And if you just sim make simple but nicely designed things, then... You know, I think that that also makes the task a little bit easier. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming along. And if you enjoyed it, if you learned anything, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, it helps me a lot. And uh, if you want classes that are more intensive, longer, and more detailed, then please sign up for the Members Classroom. Okay, well, I think that's it. So... From my house to yours, from my heart to yours, thanks again. And uh, I guess it's Donna Cato signing out. Okay, I know I said goodbye, but I'm back because I remembered why this looks so different. This piece looks different. It's because I took resin and I mixed the powder in it so essentially I made it a paint <laughs> and then I painted it on black and it took a number of coats to cover the black maybe three maybe not well I can't remember exactly anyway it's quite thick you can see it like see so I made it a paint actually so when you look at this piece because I do believe it might be the same as like this 
it might be the same as this one. I think, I don't know if it's the same as this. Anyway, what you're seeing, what you're seeing is a paint as a, instead of uh, a powdered surface onto which clear has been applied. Now, when you add, when you apply clear anything, clear coat, clear whatever, it enhances the color and it, it, it brings a certain depth when you look at it, right? It looks deeper. You're looking into it because physically you are looking through a layer of something clear at something underneath that clear layer. Different with paint. Paint, you're looking at the surface. So even though this is very shiny, what you're looking at is the surface. You're not looking through to the surface. I hope that makes sense. This one is a little different. See how much shinier it is? I, I think that this actually was done the other way. It was powdered, and then I put clear resin on top. And so it has a different kind of quality to it. Yeah, I would not do this again, I don't think. It, it Basically, it turned it into paint. And if I'm going to turn it into paint, then I might as well use paint. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I mean, in my mind, it kind of does. Okay, so now I really am saying bye-bye. <laughs> I know. You're scared, right? You're scared I'm going to come back. Okay, I promise I'm not coming back. This is Donna Cato signing out. Bye.